The coach took his case to the court, arguing that he and other public school employees have the right to pray aloud while on the job. This is a right for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're this religion or that religion or have no faith whatsoever. High school football coach Joseph Kennedy finally has some justice after his school district terminated him back in 2015 for saying prayers at the 50-yard line after every football game. As SCOTUS blog reported earlier this morning, the Supreme Court sides with a high school football coach in a First Amendment case about prayer at the 50-yard line. The Supreme Court says the public school district violated the coach's free speech and free exercise rights when it barred him from praying on the field after games. Of course, the victory for religious freedom is hated by progressives, many of whom are claiming this ruling will lead to forced religion in American schools, which anybody with a grasp of reality knows is nonsense, but let's bring in somebody with a grasp on reality. Our friend Charles Cook, senior writer at National Review. Charles, first off, it's been a good few days for Constitution, the rule of law, and reason. Been a great few days for those things. Uh, for nearly 80 years, the Supreme Court has been either a vehicle for progressive change or a crapshoot. And it seems that uh, finally uh, it's got its finger firmly on the Constitution's text. It's day after day after day, it seems to be making the right call. What do you think about this Coach Kennedy ruling today? Uh, is the left shrieking about this? more because they still haven't processed the massive, uh, you know, the massive fusillade that they received on Friday? Or are they really worried that this is a slippery slope to, you know, the American uh, uh, indoctrination of children into prayer all day, all day long in school? What do you think? Well, I think it's a bit of both. Uh, it's going to take a while for them to adjust to a post-row world. Frankly, it's taken me a while, although I'm pleased about the change. Uh, I, I think if you read the dissent, uh, there's a couple of things going on. The first one is that there has always been a big difference between the way America treats religious liberty, for example, and the way, say, France does. You know, in France, the, the government really encourages secularism. It tries to discourage the public display of religious belief. There's a, a, a system there called laïcité. And in America, that's not the case. Uh, in America, yes, we don't have a state church. We shouldn't have one. Uh, but the idea behind most of our constitutional provisions is to protect religion from the government and make sure everyone, irrespective of their religious beliefs or lack thereof, is able to exercise them. And at some point in American history, the left got the idea that we had a French-style laïcité system and that the government was there to prevent exercise at every given point. And if you read the dissent, that's really how it comes across. But of course, that's not what the American Constitution demands. Um, it was never held to, to do that until the 60s and 70s, where we had a bunch of decisions, you know, like Roe v. Wade on abortion, that were wrong. Uh, and the court today has corrected some of those decisions, specifically the Lemon Test, uh, finally. 